Welcome to Lava Beds National Monument in Northern California. Uh, this big expanse of volcanic vents, lava fields, all sorts of different volcanic features here. Off in the distance we have the Medicine Lake Volcano, which is a much bigger, broader volcano. Kind of a complicated volcano because it sits partially associated with the Cascade Volcanoes and then partly associated with these closer volcanoes, which are part of the Basin and Range Province. Looking here uh, to the south, we can see some of these big cinder cone volcanoes, these uh, symmetrical cone-shaped volcanoes with the craters in the summit. And these were the vents for many of the lava flows we see here in the foreground. One more big cinder cone off here to the northwest. Um, but not to be missed among all these bigger volcanoes uh, is this volcano I'm standing on here. And this is called Black Crater. Welcome to Black Crater. I'm Sean Wilsey, geology professor. I thought we'd look around this volcano a little bit and contrast it a bit with these cinder cones that we see here. So cinder cones are dominantly made out of small particles of vesicular basalt. Basically, there's enough gas in the magma that when it erupts, it throws up, you know, uh, fist size to marble size pieces of basalt with lots of little bubbles in them. And those accumulate around the vent to form these volcanoes, these nice symmetrical cones there. When we look at Black Crater here, um, we see a few things different. One is that it is much smaller. It's not nearly as tall as some of those cinder cones off in the distance, which can reach up to a thousand feet, 300 meters or so in terms of height. We also see that the material that makes up this volcano, which is a spatter cone, is really different. Instead of lots of small pieces of cinders, loose cinders piled up around the vent. Instead, what we have here is material that's glued together. It looks a lot more like lava, and that's in fact what it is. But instead of the lava just pouring out of the ground passively, there was just enough gas in the magma and enough pressure that it threw out these clots of lava. So these clots of lava just came out as blobs, if you will, um, right around the vent. And as they piled up around the vent to form the spatter cone, they welded together. Their heat actually welded them together. And we can see in here some of the, the color differences between the, the, the black basalt and then the outer edge here, which is a little more oxidized in red. It's probably where it was a little bit more uh, heated up by the pieces around it. And so they, they're glued together. So this material has a fun name in the world of geology. We've got to have cool names for all these things. So we call it spatter. Well, that's not very exciting, but when it's all glued together like this, um, this is sometimes called agglutinate. So we could call this spatter agglutinate. Basically the spatter was the product that came out of the volcano, but as it all clumped together and stuck together to form this aggregated rock unit here, uh, becomes a rock type called agglutinate. And so we can see it's just piles and piles and blobs of, you know, anything from maybe beach ball size down to fist size, pieces of basaltic lava that have all stuck together and accumulated uh, around this area here, which is probably one of the vents, this, this pit here. As we head over here to the east, probably was another vent in this depression here. Then you can see these walls here that have kind of stuck together. These volcanoes are really similar to some of the recent eruptions we've had in Iceland. Um, those recent eruptions in 2021, uh, 2022, and even this year in 2023, um, a lot of those eruptions started out as fissures, cracks in the ground where the lava was erupting, but then they coalesced over time to become an actual uh, spatter cone. So very similar to what we see in those areas. So these spatter cones, um, maybe 100 feet tall at the most, that would be kind of exceptionally tall one. This one's probably on the order of 60 to 80 feet tall, maybe something like 25 meters or so. Uh, and you can see the outer surface here. It's just this chaotic texture and mixture 
of um, all this spatter that's accumulated here. Some really vibrant orange lichens growing here on the surface. Um, but eventually these volcanoes uh, end their eruptive cycle and can presumably only grow so tall. They do become somewhat um, unstable and they can actually slump down. In some places we might see places where the molten lava that formed the spatter cone actually ooze down the sides. Uh, some nice iridescent colors in this part of the basalt here. So first time here we're just exploring together. Um, yeah you can kind of see some of the flow features here in this highly oxidized section of rock. Um, looks like some of it's flowed a little bit down there. Hopefully you can see a little bit in the shadows. You can see where it's kind of dripping and draping over the top. Um, but the spatter is not really accumulating out here. This is all actual lava flows. And if we head over to the north side, we should be able to see where this cone or these spatter cones were actually feeding into a lava channel. Because if the lava is accumulating and it's hot enough and it stays molten, they'll actually start flowing out to form a flow that moves away from the spatter cone. Might get cliffed out here. We can see some of the lava there dripping and draping over that little uh, outcrop there. Let's head through this little gap. And so basaltic volcanism is definitely the dominant theme, the main flavor of the volcanoes that have erupted here at Lava Beds National Monument. Here's where we can see this channel flowing down through here. We'll head down there here in a second. Um, but this is where some of the spatter um, had accumulated to form these cones, but the lava looks like it breached this vent here and started flowing out and down into this channel. So we're leaving the spatter cone and heading out looking down towards um, the actual channel down here. And this eruption was about 3,100 years ago, so fairly recent world of geology. Uh, and you can see it's pretty fresh on the landscape, not a lot of vegetation that's overgrown it. So now we're looking down the lava channel and you can see the clear benches on either side of it. So this thing would have been higher at some point. Lava flowing through this low area here, this little valley. Um, possibly some of the heat from that lava thermally eroding it deeper and deeper. And then at other times where the lava was higher, maybe a, a stronger lava output may have been overflowing these levees on either side and then draping out across the landscape here. But very similar to what I saw uh, this last spring out with my students in Hawaii looking at the 2018 uh, lava channel there. Although that was many times larger than this in terms of its, its scale. So pretty awesome. So just some of the highlights here, uh, some of the volcanic features at Lava Beds National Monument. Um, overall, I was pretty surprised with this place. It had a lot more diversity and a lot, a lot of neat volcanic features, a little bit more than that, what I was expecting. So if you're looking for a fun volcanic destination, this might be a good one to put on your bucket list. So we'll go ahead and head back to the car and on to the next stop. But thanks for joining me again. Geology Professor Sean Wilsey out here at Lava Beds National Monument in Northern California.